Storing data on chain is expensive, it's cumbersome, and sometimes it's just not possible to store tens of thousands of addresses within a smart contract on the Ethereum mainnet. So for Solidity developers, if we have something like an NFT drop and we want to create a whitelist of all these users that we want to give access to our drop, then the way we do this and we get around that and kind of data storage problems is to use a Merkle tree. This compresses the amount of data that we can store on chain to a simple Merkle root, and then we can verify the addresses against that Merkle root to prove that the address is part of the list. In this video, I'm gonna go through how we do this in practice, creating a Merkle tree and then updating the Merkle root within a Solidity smart contract to enable some functionality for the users that are whitelisted, and then generating the Merkle proofs for their users that we can deliver to them on the front end. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at this Merkle generating script. This is written in Node.js, which is a JavaScript runtime library. It requires a couple of uh, modules to be installed, Merkle tree JS and kcac 256, which is the hashing algorithm. We've got a couple of addresses here, which are already in our whitelist. And then we've taken a hash of each addresses and then created our Merkle tree using the Merkle tree JS library. From there, we're gonna to log to the console, the Merkle root, and then for each address, the address and the proof. So, if we go into Remix now, we've got a smart contract here, which is a demo contract for how you can use whitelist in production. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this, and then we're gonna go down to here, and I'm gonna copy um, the second address. I'm gonna add that to our uh, whitelist. So comma, let's save that, and then let's go ahead and create our Merkle tree. So if I zoom out a little bit so you can see this, I'll make this full screen. You can see we've got a Merkle root here. Let's copy that and then deploy the contract using the Merkle root as the constructor argument which we're passing in, which is storing it here. We've deployed that locally and you can see to claim we need to provide a Merkle proof. So if we use this address that we recently added, 0AB8, we can use this Merkle proof to get past this level of authorization. So here we're checking that the user, which is message.sender that's calling the transaction, has um, the proof that is relevant to the Merkle root that we've used in the constructor argument. If we first try this with an address which isn't in the Merkle tree, we can put the array in here, enclosing it within brackets because we want to claim an array. And you can see we get this error here, the test variable hasn't updated because the address that we're connecting with or we're calling this transaction with isn't in the Merkle root, so the proof that we're giving it isn't verified. If we then try that with the correct address, we can claim this, the transaction goes through, we get to this logic here where we are updating this test variable and that now shows our message.sender address. So essentially we've blocked off the logic here which might be a claim function for an NFT or a mint function or some kind of airdrop. And we've created this, we can create a massive list of addresses and store that all within a single Merkle root within a smart contract and then verify that using proofs. On the front end, we actually need to deliver each user this array of proofs and then give them that to call when the transaction goes through. So when they connect the wallet, you need to provide them with the proof. And note that both the proof and the Merkle root will change whenever there's an update to the underlying data within that Merkle tree. For Solidity developers, a Merkle tree allows us to compress large amounts of data down to a single Merkle root and then store that on chain and verify against it. It allows us to efficiently use things like whitelists and blacklists and have logic within our code which scales to a number of users that we need without having to store every single user's address on chain, which would be expensive and sometimes just not possible. All the code you've seen here is available in the blog post linked to in the description. If you want to learn more about blockchain development and decentralized finance, then subscribe to the channel. Please hit the like button and thank you for watching.